Amen, amen. Hey, would you just thank Jesus across the room one more time? And you can uh, high five somebody tonight and find your seat. Anybody thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight on a Wednesday night? Man, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. I don't know about you, but it's a good night to have a good night. Why don't you just elbow somebody, high five somebody, look at somebody deep into their eyes and tell them it's a good night to have a good night. Well, hey, church, I, I just wanna say thank you uh, for praying for uh, people that are affected by the uh, storms and the, the, the hurricane. Um, and uh, they mentioned it a minute ago, but our, our disaster relief buckets that we packed just a couple weeks ago, they actually are on the way to Tampa right now. And so our, uh, your generosity, your generosity and those buckets is what helps the trucks get down there and those buckets that we pack. So it's pretty awesome that we get to be a part uh, of relief from Surprise and, and all of our campuses. And I also wanna just mention one month uh, away from Fall Family Night. And if you're kinda like, I don't, I don't fully understand how I can get involved, let me tell you one of the greatest ways that you can get involved is if you have, any, anybody in here have a car? All right, okay. Anybody not have a car in your life at all? Okay, man, I wish I could walk everywhere, that'd be awesome. But we, we need cars here in Surprise, Arizona. If you have a car, one of the ways that you can get involved is by uh, being a part of the trunk or treat. And uh, all it is, is that you're taking, if you have an SUV, you're opening up the back, a trunk in the back of your car, you're opening up the back, you're decorating it, making it look cool, something fun, you have some candy, and you're hanging out, smile on your face, we're gonna line them up on this back sidewalk by the grass. So we're gonna have all this carnival stuff out here in the grass, and then we need a bunch of people that are willing to come out on that night and put some stuff in the back of your car. The easiest way you can get involved is to go on the website, radiantchurch.com, right on the homepage of the website, there should be a sign up uh, or a more info button that you can click on there. So I just wanna mention that if it's in your heart to be a part of that, that would be an awesome thing. I believe that there's gonna be people, kids and families that come to know Jesus because of an event like this. And uh, so I'm just excited about it. But uh, tonight we're, we're gonna continue in First Peter and uh, we have been going through the uh, book of First Peter as a church family on Wednesday nights. And if you haven't been here or, or you forgot, Peter, he, he wrote this letter uh, to an audience of persecuted people, to an audience of some people that they had some stuff going on in their life. Anybody ever had some junk going on in your life? Some, some hard moments, awesome. All of us, there's moments. And so he's telling them, hey, you need to stand strong you need to endure, you need to not give up, don't give up, somebody, look at somebody really quick, tell them don't give up, don't give up, and keep in, in the front of your mind the reality that you have been saved, that the best is ahead for your life. There's this deep confidence and encouragement that we should feel as believers and gratitude at the reality that, man, we've been saved. We have been, I'm thankful that I've been saved. I wanna, I wanna give you just a couple verses from last week to uh, give you some context for where we're at. In chapter one, verse 23, he wrote, for you have been born again, not of the seed which is perishable, but imperishable, that is, through the living and the enduring word of God. And he goes on, and a couple verses later, he says in verse 25, this is the word which was preached to you. This word of God, this powerful message of Jesus, this powerful redeeming God that created humanity and loves humanity and he shows it all throughout this book. That's the God that we're talking about. Anybody thankful tonight on a Wednesday night for the word of God in your life? I'm thankful for his word. I'm thankful for his book. You know, the word of God, church, part of what I'm trying to tell you tonight is the word of God is it's powerful it's eternal, it's never ending, it's the truth, it's our guide, it's, it's, it's life changing, it's, it's a word that does not fade. There are other things in life are gonna fade away. Movements will fade, ideas will fade, uh, movies, think, culture will fade. The word of God will never fade. It's eternal. It's the only book that when you open it up, it, you, just, you don't just read it, it reads you. It changes you. 
It's, it's the only book that when you open it up, the author is present every time you read it. The Holy Spirit is working and revealing and working in your life. It's sharper than a two-edged sword. It cuts through bone and marrow. We are people of the book. I'm thankful to be a person of the book. I'm thankful to be a person that, that I got something to stand on. I got some truth that I know is not going to fail or fade. This last week, I was, I was reading uh, just through some some moments in history, hundreds of years ago, and, and, and one person, this, this author, talked about what moved people out of this, uh, this moment in history, hundreds of years ago, that we call like the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages. What, what moved out of those moments in history? And, and if you know uh, your history very well, you know that there were a lot of people throughout the world that were illiterate at that time. There were a lot of people that, that were believers or had some background of Christianity at this point, but the reality is, is they couldn't afford a Bible or they couldn't even read a Bible if they did have one. And, and what we know through history is the Catholic Church had gotten way off track in a lot of different ways and people didn't even know that they needed to fix it. And, and one of the major keys that this, this person I was reading, he talks about that moved us out of those moments in history was the invention of the printing press. What was the first thing that they printed on the printing press? The word, the book, the Bible, the word of God. That was the moment that, that, that things started to change. I'm just here to tell you tonight that the word of God, the book, it's got the power to change. It's got the power to heal. It's got the power to, to heal society like we need it today. We need the word. We gotta be a people that return to the book. America needs to return to the book. What's gonna reverse gender confusion in our society today? A return to the book. What's gonna reverse some of the things that maybe we're seeing in our schools? And I believe we got some great believers and teachers in our schools, but we also got some messed up stuff going on in our schools. What's gonna fix that? A return to the book. Prayer in school. Today we had, we had students all over that were praying at CU at the pole, believing that God is going to move in schools. So here's what I wanna talk about. The next, just the next few minutes, I wanna talk about desiring the word. Desiring the word. First Peter chapter two, verse one to three tonight. This is what it says. Peter says, that he talks about this enduring word. We saw it last week. And then he says, therefore, rid yourselves of all malice and deceit and hypocrisy and envy and all slander. And like newborn babies, here's the key words for me, like newborn babies long for the pure milk of the word the book, the word of God, so that, it might, that, so that by it you may grow in respect to salvation if you have tasted the kindness of the Lord. John chapter eight, Jesus said this. He said, if you continue in my word, then you're truly disciples of mine. I don't know about you, but I wanna be a disciple of Jesus. And so I wanna continue in his word, in the book. He says, you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. Anybody wanna be free tonight? The truth of this book can set a life free. His word is the truth. The teachings of Jesus, they're the truth. The word of God that's been preserved for generations. People have tried to burn it. They've tried to come against it. Yet it is still the most, the most sold book and the most stolen book across the world. The word of God. David said in the Psalms, I love your law, I love your word, I, I, I meditate on it day and night. The psalmist also wrote that his word is like a lamp unto my feet, a, a, a light unto my path. We need the word of God in our life. Peter in his letter, he wants believers to, uh, what is he trying to say tonight? He wants believers to have a longing for the word of God a longing for his word in our life, the, this same type of longing that the prophets of old in scripture, that, that the kings like David had for the word of God, for, his, for, his, for, the, for the knowledge and the wisdom of God in their life. I wanna walk back through these verses and just give you quickly five perspectives or, 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 or motivators that Peter is communicating through just these three verses that are gonna help us and lead us in our desire for the word of God. And the first posture or or action that we can take as believers is we gotta remember the source. When Peter writes, therefore, we, we, we gotta stop always and we gotta say, hey, what is that therefore? Dad joke. I say it to Hope every time and she rolls her eyes. He's referring, Peter's referring back to what we read a moment ago where it talks about this enduring word of God that does not fail, it does not fade. This, this imperishable word of God 
the gospel that, that produces a new birth, a new life within us? What's, what's the source of your salvation? The good news of Jesus, the word of God? What's the source that, that we need to remind ourselves on a regular basis? His word. It's, it's, it's the basis for, for an ongoing, powerful, life-lived following Jesus is a connection, a, a person that would say, I'm gonna abide in the word of God. I'm gonna live in his word. I'm gonna make it a part of my every day. I'm gonna make it a part of my family. I'm gonna raise my family in the word. I'm gonna talk about the word with my wife. I'm gonna make the word the basis, the thing that we stand on in this life. The Bible says about itself, it never returns empty or void. When you open this book, it's, it, it, we reap the benefits of opening this book, whether we believe it or not. There is a guidance and a hope and a truth and a, and a wisdom and a power and a revelation that comes every time we start to open this book and let it change our heart and change our soul. The answers that you're looking for in life, they're found in this book. So we gotta remember our source and say, God, I'm remembering that, that everything, it flows from your word and the good news of who you are. Secondly, we need to eliminate sin. Peter said in verse one, he said, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, all hypocrisy, all envy, all slander. I would ask you tonight, I would ask myself, is there a desire to be clean before God? Is there a recognition of, of our imperfection as humans and a willingness to say, God, help me walk this walk of repentance in my life? This walk of every day saying, God, if there's something within me, if, there, if I'm headed in the right direction, help me to turn around and walk toward you. Peter says, rid yourselves. He says, put aside in some translations. In the Greek, it's, it's, it's the rejection of something completely. Sometimes it's, it's used in the context in, in the ancient language of, of this idea of like stripping off soiled clothes after a hard day of work and just getting rid of it, pushing them aside, throwing them in the washing machine. I'm getting this stuff off of me once and for all. Paul said in scripture, he said, hey, you laid aside the old self. You need to move forward because there's a brand new you. I'm thankful that there is a brand new me because of Jesus. You know, in ancient baptism ceremonies, people, they literally would throw away the old clothes that they showed up in in their ceremony and the church would give them brand new clothes and they would never wear those things again as a symbol of man. I'm leaving that stuff behind and I'm gonna be a person that lives by the word of God. I'm gonna walk in obedience to him. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. This desire for the new, the things that God has for us, the new life, it leads us to the word and the word every single day changes us from the inside out when we open it up. You know, when Peter is saying get rid of all malice, it, it, it could also say trouble or it could say uh, wickedness. It's this general term and, and in the English it would be this desire to harm someone else but what Peter is really saying is like just get rid of all sin in your life. It says get rid of deceit. It's, it's this word dolos in the Greek. It means like a bait or a fish hook. Get rid of dishonesty. Get rid of falsehood. Get rid of the, the, the deceit and the fraud and the, the things that are uh, not real in your life. Quit lying to yourself. Quit lying to your spouse. Quit lying to the people in your life. Quit trying to make yourself look a certain way. Are you the same at church as you are at home, as you are at, at, at work? Are you the person that there's a brand knew you and you're walking in the integrity of God in your life. It says get rid of the hypocrisy. It's this idea of an actor wearing a mask. Church, I came tonight to tell you, take off the mask. Be real before God and he'll clean you up and he'll help you. And what people are gonna see is gonna be something that's contagious and they're gonna say, man, I want that. <laughs> when you wear a mask, there's nothing that people want. It says get rid of the envy. I wonder tonight if you came in and you're a person that you resent other people's prosperity, you resent other people, what God is doing in their life, you, you hold on to grudges, you have bitterness, this root of bitterness in your heart. I wonder if there is a hatred for a person or something in your life. What, what does conflict look like in your life? Is there an envy that's within you? I'm here tonight to tell you, ask the Holy Spirit to help you get rid of that envy, that bitterness, whatever that may be, and I promise he'll help you. Peter says get rid of the slander, the 
the gossip, the backbiting, the, the complaining about each other. I'm, I'm telling you, if we're not careful, it's really easy to get in the mode of gossip, the, the mode of slander, the mode of, of backbiting, the mode of complaining about each other. I, I, I wonder if some of us in the room, if Jesus was reading our phones, if he would say, why are you in those gossip text threads? What, why, are, what, why are you gossiping on your Instagram messages? What, what, why are you getting together with the ladies for Bible study and you never actually open the book and it just turns into a gossip session every time? I'm just saying, I wonder. He's saying, get rid of that stuff so that you can see the goodness of God in your life. Confession and repentance and moving forward in the life of a Christian, it clears the way for this unhindered desire for the things of God. And it's like it opens heaven to what God wants to do in and through our lives. It's powerful. Thirdly, we gotta admit our need. Peter said, he said, like newborn babies long for this pure milk of the word. In another part of scripture, Paul, he talks about uh, milk and he talks about meat and, he's, and it's this idea where he's bringing up maturity. But in the context of Peter's letter tonight, it's not the same as what Paul was writing. Peter is simply saying, you need the nourishment of the word. We need the truth like a baby needs milk is what Peter's saying. My wife, she has a she has a baby sister. I don't I don't know if they're if they're here tonight. I don't see them. Okay, I can talk about them. They're not here. Are they here? Okay, they're not here. Maybe they're watching online. It's okay. Close the online for a second. I'm kidding. Um, she has a baby sister, and and it's so it's actually really cute. Like when she needs a drink or she needs something, she gives it. She has this like cute little wine, and she's like, I need milk. I need some milk, and then, and, then, and, then, and then it's like the wrong drink, or she gets the wrong thing, or they give her the wrong food, and she's like, I don't like that one. She's like really good at that. That's like one of her favorites. I don't like this, I don't like that one. She's really good at that. I forgot why I even said that. <laughs> I'm distracting myself by how I can sound so much like her. It's this type of voice that shows her desire for, for a drink or whatever she needs in that moment. And, and, and a baby or a kid, there's, it's like this singular desire, right? When, they, when they're hungry or when they need a drink or they need something, it's like, I need milk now. I need it immediately. And Peter is saying, hey, we as believers, we need to have a regular, singular desire on a regular basis where we're just admitting to ourselves, man, I need the word in my life. I need the word to help me right now. I need something different. I need his truth to clean me up. We gotta be people that, that, like babies, indulge in this nourishment of the word. Peter, he, he, he adds an adjective in the Greek that it, it really makes this statement uh, born just now. It's like a newborn infant that has a desperate cry for milk and they can't crawl and they can't go to the fridge and open it up and get it. There's just this cry that says, I need some milk. Just look at someone real quick and say, get that, get that boy some milk. Get that girl some milk. The milk of the word. Peter says, Peter says, we were designed as believers to have a longing for the word, a longing for the things of God. Some of us, we don't admit it. And maybe you're in that place tonight and you're in a place of complacency. I would just challenge you tonight when you go home, God, pray, God, give me a new desire. Give me, a, give me a fresh perspective. Give me a desire for your word, for, your, for the things that are of you, a new hunger for your word. Convict me when I get home and I'm immediately on Facebook and I'm all into the politics that I need to set my phone aside and I need to get in the book because that's gonna get me way further than Facebook ever did. I need your guidance in my life. I need the pure word, the Greek word. It means uncontaminated. I remember growing up eating organic home-cooked meals. I'm th thank you, mom, for cooking those meals. My gosh, she was a good cook. I had some good stuff growing up, and, I, and, and when I went to college, my wife is also an amazing cook. They're both good cooks. See, see how I'm winning by <laughs> encouraging both of them? But I'm just talking about when I was growing up, before I ever met my wife, we, I went to college, and my organic home-cooked meals, like diet, went out the window. I was eating peanut butter waffles every single day in the cafeteria because the other food was gross. And so I, my diet went out the window. I'm eating terrible food and, and it's not this home-cooked, organic, great ingredients, all this stuff. And, and I'll just, for, for lack of further details, my stomach was messed up. And I'm, I, I'm just trying to tell you, when, when, I, when I got on a break 
and I went back home and I got back onto the pure food, the, the, the home cooked food, my skin started to clear up again and the acne went away. My, my energy started to return. My, my stomach lining started to get healed. The, the porcelain throne was no longer painful is what I'm trying to tell you tonight. What I'm saying is in the same way, when we, get in, when we get back in the word after a long absence in our life, there's something that it starts to clean us up. Our energy, our vitality, our, our, our spiritual, spirituality in our life starts to return. It starts to clean us from the inside out. We start to find healing. We start to find the truth. It guides us into the things that God has for us. That's what I'm trying to tell you, church. Peter is saying long for that in your life. We also need to pursue spiritual growth. Peter said, so that, that by it you may grow in respect to salvation. It's this passive verb that he's using that, that, that really what it means is it may grow you. The word that grows us into what God has for us in our life. The word grows us into the fullness of salvation. We're, we're, we're being sanctified. What does that word sanctified mean? Every single day of our life as we walk with Jesus, we're becoming more like Jesus. Do I have any sanctified saints in the room? Some people that are becoming more like Jesus, some people that are looking forward to the day where someday we're gonna be glorified, but along the way, every single day, Jesus, make me a little bit more like you. Greatest way to do that is by getting in the book. I'm thankful for what I've been brought out of, but I, I'm not where I wanna be, Lord. We, we should have a healthy discontent as believers for the imperfection in our life that pushes us to say, God, I need your book. I need a little more of you. I need you to help me and change me and guide me and speak to me and give me a new revelation of your goodness. Last thought for you is, it's, it's almost more of a question. Do you count your blessings? Peter said, if you've tasted the kindness of the Lord, in Psalm 34, it said, taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you, do you in a, on a regular basis, remember the moments that the Lord has been good to you? Do you remember the moments where he blessed you? Do you remember the moments where that, that one moment where he saved you and changed you? Do you remember that, the, the, that moment maybe months ago, maybe a couple years ago where he protected you from something and you were a little mad at first, but you look back now and you're like, thank God that that didn't happen that way. God, thank you for your protection in my life. Do you remember the moments where he answered your prayers? I was driving down the road the other day thinking about God. I wonder how many accidents and how many sicknesses and things that you saved me from that I'll never even know that this side of heaven, but because you're good and you're merciful. I wonder his angels, how many times they protected you and you don't even know about it. He's a good God and he says that he'll do it, Psalm 91. I could tell you so many stories of the goodness in my life of God that I do know. It's just a challenge tonight, church. Is there a desire for the word in your life? for the truth of God. Anybody desire the word of God after, after talking for a few minutes tonight? Personally, I, I just wanna challenge you. As you go home tonight, somebody's gonna go home and immediately you're jumping on Facebook again, you're jumping on ESPN. I would challenge you, set it down and get in the book. I'm gonna do it myself. You gotta keep me accountable. I'm gonna get in the book tonight. <laughs> At least, even if it's just a few minutes before bed, I think about some of the moments where I was in the book the most in my life and I was indulging every day. Those are the greatest moments of my life. I wonder, as we go through Acts as a church, if you would sit down and for yourself open up the book and say, God, I'm gonna read this story of your early church. Would you speak to me? Would you change me? Would you help me to see some of these same things in my life, in Radiant Church, in, in my family? God, I want the fullness of your Holy Spirit. I, I want the power that these early church members walked in. I want that in my life. I would challenge you, read the book of Acts for yourself. I, I sat down at one point several years ago for like two hours and I read through the book of Acts and I had just a God moment that I can't even explain. I think there's somebody in here that if you would do that, there would be just a encounter with God in your life. Think about some of the moments when I was younger and my parents challenged me. And I think they even, they even bribed me with money. I don't know if that's okay or not, but they bribed me with money and said, I'll, I'll pay you like 30 bucks if you read through your whole Bible. And I'm like, man, I, I hear that now. And I'm like, I should have made it 75. <laughs> It was a different time, inflation. Gas was cheap. I didn't even need gas at that age. I think about those moments and I read through the entire book and, 
and I got this picture of the goodness of our God and this revelation of who he was and it changed my life. I was like 11 years old the first time that I read through it all the way. It's a challenge, church, get in the book. Think about some of the moments, maybe, maybe you don't know where to start tonight and you're new to church or you're new to reading the book for yourself, start in the Gospels. Start with the message of Jesus, the story of Jesus. I love the book of Matthew. It's like this guide to being a disciple and to making disciples. Start, start in Mark. It, it gets immediately into the action. Read the story of Jesus. Maybe you're like, I, I just need to get in the book. Maybe, maybe you need to start in Proverbs and get some wisdom in your life. When I was in college, we used to do this thing that we called Midnight Proverbs. At midnight, there's like 10 guys that would get into a dorm room and it smelled like something I can't explain, but we would get in a dorm room and we would open up the book of Proverbs and there's 31 chapters and so whatever day of the month that it was, if it was September 9th, we're going to Proverbs chapter nine and we would just sit there and talk about it and pray over each other and there's wisdom probably that I have today that came out of moments like that. I'm just saying, get in the book. It's a challenge to have a new desire for the book in your life, the word of God in your life. I promise you, if you get in your word, it will change you for the better. There's nothing bad that's gonna happen, only good. It, it, this word of God, I mean, it's gonna help the anxiety that you've been walking in for the last couple months. It's gonna help you to be the parent that you wanna be. It's gonna help all of our ethics and our treatment of people and, and, and our love for humanity. It'll help us, it'll give you the peace that you need for today, that, that God's peace that surpasses understanding when you start to open up and read the promises of God. It'll give you the hope that you've been looking for in the midst of the trouble that you're going through in your life. Let's be people of the book, people of God's word, the, the people that he's calling us to be. I love what the psalmist said, I have hidden in your word in my heart so that I may not sin against you. God, help me to hide that word in my heart. Can I pray for you, church? Lord, thank you for your goodness in our life. Thank you for every person in this room. Thank you for people watching online tonight. God, thank you for your book. Thank you that we have a word, a, a book, a truth that it'll never fade, it'll never fail. It's all good, there's nothing bad about it. Thank you for the life-changing word that has been shared for generations, that has changed lives and saved people and set people free. Thank you for the people in this room that have been set free from bondage because of this book. Thank you, Lord. God, I just repent for the moments that I haven't been in your word. Lord, give me a new desire for your word. Give me, an, give me a longing for this spiritual milk that, that is the nourishment that I need in my life. God, I pray over every person would, as we open the book as a church family, would there just be a new revelation a new moment in our history as a church family where we would be people of the word like never before that spend time and we talk about it and we process it and we let it change us from the inside out. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Give us a new desire in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hey, I'm just gonna ask all across the room, let's just take the last few minutes that we have and maybe you're, maybe you're with a friend or your spouse or a family member or distant cousin or maybe you're sitting next to someone you don't even know and you feel like praying together, but I would challenge you, if you're with somebody that you know, just take a few minutes and say, how can I pray for you? Maybe within those prayers, say, God, give us a new desire for your word. Speak to us through your word. Let's take just the next five minutes and then we'll come back and we'll close tonight. Let's pray together.